Imagine with me, you are working at CVS, and two men hiding under their mask come into your store and ask for money from your register. Unless you are secretly Batman, you have no choice but to give away money in exchange for your safety. But now with two new amazing technologies, IoT, which stands for Internet of Things, and machine learning, CVS is going to keep its money, and you'll be safe. Let me show you how. The first technology is called IoT. Your phone may trick you into thinking that our entire world is interconnected with each other and with the Internet. But when you look around, maybe only 5% of our physical world is connected. We have about 25 billion IoT devices right now, which each person may have two or three. In a few years, by 2020, that number is going to grow to 50 billion devices. And the growth is going to be exponential. Companies and also cities are trying to think how they can utilize these technologies to enable their citizens to be safer and also introduce new products. For example, Amazon may deliver you toilet paper when you need it. <laughs> and cities and municipalities are installing sensors and also cameras to process those data. Think about the massive amount of data that we have to process. Our current computer systems cannot and will not be able to process those data, especially video data. That's where machine learning comes into play. So where's machine learning? Maybe most of you have heard about machine learning. It's quite different than our programming. In programming, we spend a lot of time designing programs. It's like at OSU, we have programs that produces your GPAs. But for machine learning, we use massive, massive amount of data to develop the program or the machine learning model. So let me use and make a major implementation of machine learning called neural network to illustrate how machine learning works. Neural network tries to mimic how our brain works in a simplistic way. So the basic ingredients of a neural network is an artificial neuron. An artificial neuron is connected to all the other neurons, most of the other neurons. And the interconnections are represented by a number called weight. The higher the weight, the more influence it has on the other neurons. So a typical architecture of a neural network is represented by three layers, three kinds of layers. The first kind is the input layer, which takes in the data from the physical world, like the camera feed from your smartphone. The second kind of layer is the hidden layer, which is the computation engine of a neural network. So we could have many, many layers of hidden layers. The third is the output layer, which produces the result. So how does machine learning actually work? By a method called backpropagation. So it's like a, it's like a feedback loop. Backpropagation measures the differences between the intended output and also the actual output. Initially, those results will be quite different. So that's why we need massive amounts of data to refine the neural network. In this example, we fit in hundreds and thousands or millions of pictures of a gun. So it's actually fitting in into a neural network. The self-propagation goes back and then changes the millions of interconnections among the neurons. Over time, we can train this neural network to recognize a gun. It's not an easy job. It takes a lot of computation. So let's see how this works. 
So going back to the example of CVS, now we have an IoT-enabled camera connected to a new network. And this IoT security camera with the new network will be able to recognize this person hiding under a mask. So the new network is going to seek out this person, saying that this person is holding a gun, a threat to the employee, within many seconds, will be able to call 911. CVS is going to keep its money, and you will be safe and get promoted. <laughs> Not only cities and municipalities are tackling this. I've been working with many of those cities, and they have been trying to understand how they can help to help their citizens to be more safe. At the same time, they are also addressing traffic and pollution, which are getting worse every day. Do you agree? And these two technologies, IoT and machine learning, are going to enable us to cut traffic with an application like vehicle platooning. What you've seen here is that trucks are lined up like burst formation. And the inter-vehicle distance is going to be much shorter, like 5 to 10 feet. And this is enabled by the intercommunication between the vehicles using the newest 5G technology. Imagine that if you can cut down the inter-vehicle distance, how much vehicles you can pack in the highway, that's cutting down the traffic. At the same time, you can reduce pollution because the first truck is like a bird, the first bird in the formation. It will pick up almost all the, most of the air resistance and the other trucks will have less air resistance, thus higher fuel efficiency. This will reduce pollution. Not only the cities are looking at those, but they are also trying to understand how can they reduce car accidents. Not only the vehicles are communicating with themselves, they are also communicating with the infrastructure. In this example, a fire engine is communicating to the traffic lights, directing the traffic lights to turn green and the other lights to turn red. And the traffic lights are going to broadcast alert signals to all the other vehicles. Hopefully, we can reduce reduce uh, accidents. Not only cities are trying to use these technologies, but companies are trying to reinvent them themselves. Homes are getting smarter. Almost every appliance will be connected with each other or with the internet. Google just released a study with a new, with a new network enabled retina scan. They use 300,000 patient rec records to train this retina scan that can potentially save a life by detecting heart attack earlier. Hundreds of, of Audi sensors are installed in jet engines to measure whether the jet engine is going to have problems and also improve fuel efficiency. Robots are equipped with computer vision to care for our sick and elderly with their daily chores. So you may think, Dennis, you have a PhD, then you can do all this. But that's not true. I have a demo, an Amazon Deep Lens outside in the lobby, right after these talks. This Amazon Deep Lens is an IoT-enabled machine learning device. Come with some sample neural networks. I was able to install it, set up a object recognition neural network in a few hours. I was able to change a few lines in the programs to change the output. You can too. You can, for example, program with a few lines, be able to open your garage door when this IoT device sees your cars coming in on your driveway. Amazon is going to release this device in a few months. Google and other companies are also releasing similar devices. And this device is only $250. So, whether you are, so if you imagine you can go back in time to the beginning of the internet, like 40, 50 years ago, at the forefront 
of the internet technology, how much you can change the future. With these two new technologies, I believe we are entering a new technology era, like Internet 2.0. The technology is in front of you. So whether you are alumni, a faculty, or maybe a student, whether your discipline is in medicine, in city planning, in business, in engineering, you can change the future. And welcome to the future. I would like to ask you a favor. Say, welcome to the future to the friend next to you. Can you say? <laughs> and I hope to see you all in the future. Thank you. <laughs>